Hey everybody, welcome back to Vlogmas. Today Michael and I are taking all of our Christmas cards to a town called Christmas, Florida to mail them and get the Christmas Let's stamp. Go. Let's go. Fort Christmas is located in Orange County, Florida. For us, that's about an hour drive. We are headed to a place called Fort Christmas Historical Park, which is a recreation of a fort from the 19th century. Also, there is a post office in Christmas, Florida that has stamps for people to decorate their envelopes. Our Christmas cards are pretty decorated already, but we wanted the postmark to actually say that we mailed our cards from Christmas, Florida. Here's a cute little scale model of what Fort Christmas probably looked like in 1817, right inside the post office. We did not know that the post office actually has a Christmas card envelope decorating station set up where you can borrow their rubber stampers and ink pads and stamp all over the outside of your card if you want to. We had pretty much already decorated all of our cards, but we wanted to check it out just because this is a tradition. Here's a look at the inside of the post office. Otherwise, it's just a standard, normal post office, and we were waiting in line while everyone else finished decorating their cards, and then we got to start decorating ours. That was so super fun. We had a great time. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Fort Christmas candy cane. Let's do it. Right here, get that. Here we go. Historical park. Traffic is already backed up. You're not um, getting it. We've already driven through here once before we realized the post <laughs> office was actually back this away. <laughs> well, this one was under construction. So. Yeah. They're, un they're putting a, apparently there's a post office under construction in the historical park. If I'm not misunderstanding what I was told, but it isn't open for business yet. So we had to come back out, mail our cards, and now we're going into the park. Here we go, welcome back to the park. <laughs> this is Fort Christmas Historical Park, and every year, the first weekend in December, they have a uh, Christmas, it's called Cracker Christmas, and there'll be live like historical uh, demonstrations and reenactments because there's a porta potty. I hope you enjoy that. Um, so we're excited just to see what's here. I can't wait. Yeah. We're stuck in some oh, traffic. Keep filming. And you see the old sugar cane the guy's using the tractor they used to use horses for? Right here. To extract the sugar yeah. out of the cane. A little sneak peek. I can't wait yeah. to see what's here. This parking lot is full. <laughs> I mean, not completely full. We're gonna find a space, but it isn't going to be easy to find a space. It's only been, what, 20 minutes since we were last here, and yet we've got six more rows of full traffic. I don't know if I said that. Past. We came here thinking the post office was here, and then found out that it isn't. The post office is a few miles up the street, so we had to turn around and go back. We actually drove right past and didn't see it. Uh, but, wow, we are parking at the very back corner of the parking lot. This is, it must be a, a bigger to do yeah, than I let's thought. Hope, let's hope we have a good time. I'm excited. We can only stay for a few hours because our pup's in daycare and we have to pick her up by three o'clock, so which means we have to leave here around two. However, we're gonna see as much as we can. That's right. Cracker Christmas is an annual two day event held on the first full weekend in December. The event features live historical demonstrators, vendors, and various arts and crafts and foods for sale. It's called Cracker Christmas because it refers to the cracking sound made by the whips used by early settlers to herd their cattle, hence why the Floridians were called crackers. That's cute. Oh. Oh, that is all old. I want to tell you some of this over some cream cheese. 
There's like puppy paws all over it. Yeah, it's a pretty tree. Do you want to try the ice cream? I love how it's painted up like Christmas. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. As white settlers moved into Florida in the 1820s and 30s, there were growing demands that the Seminole Indians be removed to a reservation west of the Mississippi. Efforts to convince the Seminoles to move failed, and in 1835, the conflict known as the Second Seminole Indian War began in earnest. Late in 1837, Major General Thomas Jessup overall commander in Florida, began intensive preparations to carry the fighting to the South Florida, where he believed he would find a large force of hostile Indians. These preparations included opening a road on the west side of the St. Johns River and building along the road several posts to serve as depots for operations in the South. On December 25, 1837, Troops under the command of Brigadier General Abraham Eustis established Fort Christmas on the north side of a creek a short distance from this site. General Jessup himself led the column south from Fort Christmas early in January. By late January, Jessup's troops were receiving their supplies by water from the St. Lucie River, and in March, Fort Christmas was abandoned. While this simple wooden fortification was short-lived, it gave its name to the town of Christmas, a short distance south of here. Fort Christmas Historical Park includes a replica of a fort built in 1837, a traditional Florida cracker house and eight pioneer homes, a schoolhouse and a lunchroom, a sugarcane mill, and other historic farming equipment. The park is open every day of the year, including holidays from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. This is a blockhouse, and it served as a lookout and headquarters for General Thomas Jessup and for protection of the troops in the event of an Indian attack. Two blockhouses were constructed on opposite corners of the stockade, 20 feet square with four feet overhangs on the second level. They were constructed of pine logs, which were plentiful in the area and chinked with a mixture of sand and lime. I love the smell of leather in here. It, yeah. <laughs> Wow, that sure would have made those projects easier if we had something like this to stitch on, wouldn't it?
You having a good time? I am. This is really fun. <laughs> oh, it's almost exactly like the other one. Twenty-seven. <laughs> Man, I wish Uncle Gary was here with us today. He would have loved this. I love the little Linky Log look. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Which technically, I guess Lincoln Log didn't invent this <laughs> way of building. <laughs> They found several of these now. We heard about one from around that time when we were at, um, I think it was DeLeon Springs. Yeah. I thought it was really nice and really fitting that one of the two blockades, as they are identical, was totally dedicated to the Seminole Indian Nation, popular Seminoles who are famous and remembered from this time, and their way of life, lifestyle, and even their clothing. I thought that was a really nice touch and really fitting. There's a make a note. Yep. They also Is this supposed to represent like wetlands? I think this is the Everglades. Okay, so yeah. It's hand painted, that's pretty neat. Yeah, sure. And we've been here. Mm -hmm. And we're here now. We live somewhere in here. We've been here. Yeah, that one didn't make it onto our YouTube channel, but we have been to McKenna Beach. It is a long way away from home. We've been here. <laughs> New Smyrna, we've been there a lot. Yep. Dunlawton, that was our very first. Oh, that's right, Dunlawton Plantation. Yeah. Been here. we got to go to the Panhandle more. I know, we've not been anywhere over here. <laughs> This wood would be Wouldn't that be neat? broken down, yeah. It smells right. old. <laughs> Thank you. 
I absolutely love Spanish moss hanging from these ancient oak trees all over Florida. I just cannot get enough of how beautiful it is. This building is only used for administrative offices, but they did have some cool farm equipment out front. Wow. Yeah. Gary would love this. I know we would. This tiny building is not a church. Apparently it is only here to represent a church that is somewhere around town. I'm not really sure. I didn't really understand that much, but there's nothing inside interesting to see. It's December, but it was over 80 degrees. It was a pretty hot day. This is an outhouse? What is this? It's got Christmas made out of corn cobs. <laughs> This is the Yates house from circa the 1890s. John Burl Yates was born in 1875 and Polly Canada was born in 1874. They lived on the John Burl Yates homestead located on Taylor Creek when they were first married. They converted an old shed into living quarters and prepared meals on a cook stand out in the open. They homesteaded the property where they built this one-room house and lived a simple life off the land. They herded cattle, raised livestock, hunted deer, turkey, and wild hogs, and they always had a garden. In early times, the kitchen was on the front porch. Polly's sons added the kitchen in the rear of the house after her husband died in 1923. The gray marl clay for the original stick and mud chimney came from a local clay pit in the Taylor Creek area. I'm <laughs> sorry. 
As you can see, it was a pretty crowded day when we were here, and it seems like a lot of people turn up for Cracker Christmas. Well, they had marbles in them, too. Is that real leather? Yeah. Wow. This is the Brown House built by Ephraim Legrand Brown circa 1900. Mr. Brown was born in Americus, Georgia in 1859 and came to Florida at the age of 16. He worked as a surveyor. In 1882, he married Julia Roberts of the Roberts Plantation on Lake Mills. He purchased a 40-acre parcel of land where he built a log home and planted an orange grove. When the log home was destroyed by a fire, the family lived in the barn while a new home was built. He used the charred but sound timbers from the first log home for the floor joist in this building. Citrus trees planted by Mr. Brown bore fruit until the freeze of 1985. In that year, the Brown family was recognized by the Florida Department of Agriculture as a pioneer farm family under the 100-year farm family program. <laughs> wow. God, I love how these old houses smell. Yeah. When I see furniture like this, I'm like, I know it's antique. You think that's marble? But I feel like people I knew growing up had furniture. I know. I was thinking the same thing. My grandma got one. I feel like I've seen all this furniture before. <laughs> Pipe and foundry. <laughs> oh, manufacturing company. Ah, home sweet home. <laughs> Look how yeah. Florida this garland is has got <laughs> lemons and oranges. <laughs> this house. Know, the right? biggest house. <laughs> wow. This is the Simmons house circa 1915. George Simmons, born in 1867, and his sister Martha, born in 1872, were both children of George and Ann Simmons. They never married and remained on the family farm, caring for their father and mother in their final years. After their father's death in 1912, George began constructing a new house just to the southwest of the old place. This house had a center living room with end bedrooms and a separate kitchen and dining area. The separate kitchen allowed the main house to remain cooler in the heat of the summer. And since most house fires started in the kitchen where the cook stove burned firewood, it also provided a measure of safety against the spread of fire to the main house. As with their parents, farming was their main occupation. They grew vegetables that they sold to the turpentine camps in the area. Occasionally, Uncle George was hired out as a carpenter. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for coming. I had no idea this was going to be so amazing. This is the post office display. Yeah. And it's here because, like we said, the post office is under construction. Built approximately 1915. This is normally a bedroom in this house, but we've moved the post office display into here while their other post office is currently under construction. Hopefully we'll get to see what's being done there. Bless you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And the kitchen is over here separate. That was for heat smart. and for fire reasons. I know that was brilliant. Your sister. This is the separate dining and kitchen area to keep the heat out of the main house. Oh my goodness, this is absolutely beautiful. I'm so, 
So happy we came to see all this. Oh, yeah. Washing machine. Oh, wow. Boy, imagine how Oh, my uncle is. would love to see this. I bet yeah, he, he knows something about these stoves. It even has a timber, temperature gauge for the oven. We had a neighbor when I was growing up, and she had a stove. It reminds me of the, it, really? this reminds me of it. Yeah. Um, it, what is that, porcelain or cast iron, uh, whatever it's, it's made cast of? Iron. Yeah, I can't, yeah. How cool. Also at Cracker Christmas were quite a few Civil War encampments with reenactors wearing their regalia and doing talking demonstrations about life living in the Civil War era times and living in these encampments. Wonder what we were cooking here. The boiled peanuts? Yes, ah. yes, <laughs> this is the Wheeler Base House. Built by Jim Wheeler in the early 1900s, this small house began as a barn. It was converted to a home shortly after its completion. Early rural homes did not have glass windows. Board shutters were opened to allow the entry of light and air circulation. Batten strips were usually placed over the joints in the board siding to seal the building. This house reflects the family's home where the man worked as a day laborer for a large ranch or citrus grove owner. This family owned six acres, planted a garden, and raised livestock for their own consumption. This is the Woods House from circa 1927. Thomas Jefferson Woods, born in 1896, was the son of Francis Jackson Woods and Emma Matilda Savage. In 1927, he and his wife Katie were living in a palmetto thatched lean-to, struggling to complete the house in time for the birth of their first child, Nellie. The house originally had three rooms, a large front room and two bedrooms with porches on three sides. Later, they enclosed areas of the porch to make more bedrooms. They removed the walls between the original bedrooms to make a large kitchen dining room. Pioneers of Fort Christmas depended heavily on the wild game of the woods and fish in the rivers and creeks. Like most men in the area, Tom learned to hunt and trap as a youngster. He was able to use these skills to provide for his family by selling the hides of alligators, raccoon, possum, and otter, which were popular for making luggage, shoes, coats, and handbags. He also hired out as a guide, taking town folks on hunting and fishing trips along the St. John's River. He worked for tips and always received a share of the game for his own table. This house has an exhibit of fine photographs and artifacts reflecting the hunting, fishing, and trapping of Fort Christmas pioneer life. They all got one of these. I love the windows in this house. Boy, that was very smart for the breeze. This is the newest one on the property. I don't know. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at these. You think that was made to hold like a rifle or something? These deer feet? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Hornet nest. Did you see the alligator skin on this? I feel like somebody needs to put it on Christmas music. Agreed, yeah. This is the last house that we went in, but I forgot to get a photo of the information, so I don't actually know anything about this house. But it was really cool and really neatly furnished inside. Oh, 
Yeah. It sounds very creaky. Uh oh. I don't know if I can do it. Might have been the wife of the. Yeah. She might have been the wife of the party if she didn't have to sit there for. Yeah. Here we got another fake baby, but boy, this fake baby looks like an old fake baby. This is a big frame. Is that her again? I'm not sure. Oh my. She it's looks a little a little more pleasant in this photo. You think you, think you found her again? Oh yeah, yeah that's that her. Same scowl. That's <laughs> her. She was probably just bored having to sit there for seven hours while the camera tried to take a photo. You didn't know what it was. I did not. Look at this awesome rug. <laughs> I like to look at this room. I want to get a big pool bottle. Oh, it's full of uh, what? <laughs> This is the line we did not feel like waiting in to try alligator meat. It's hot. <laughs> the Arts and Crafts Festival just went on and on and on. We could not believe how many tents and vendors were set up all around the park. Wow. I wonder how long he is. You can buy us without a gator belly. This is one of the most exotic leathers for a pair of boots wow. that you can buy a gator belly. I've never felt because a gator of, um, before. Because of how soft it is and how, how resilient that it is. I have never touched alligator before. Wow. Goodness, that is that is a such a soft feeling. All right, I believe this is actually the post office that is currently under construction and where we thought we were going to be mailing our cards today. Or is it the other one? The other one looks like it's Sears Center. Uh, or maybe it's that one. <laughs> no, this one, baby. There's three. There's three in a row. <laughs> I was wrong. It must be this one. <laughs> so we were expecting to be mailing our Christmas cards here at the Fort Christmas Historical Park. But that's okay. We found the next closest one where we could do them. But this must be what they are doing, renewing that. Interesting. Yeah, this is the lunchroom. You want to go check out the lunchroom? Anyway, that will be where hopefully, or that, <laughs> we can mail Next our year. cards to New Year. year. Yeah. This isn't a lunchroom, this is a school. <laughs> I thought you said this was the lunchroom. No, no, this is a school? I couldn't read the sign without my glasses on. Oh, wow. So then he took it to Etheridge Johnson, who created Victor, and then later to Charles when he moved the horn inside the instrument. And they used it as an icon. Actually, that's actually a German Berliner, because Berliner was working with Etheridge Johnson. Wow. He had been sued so many times. He was the brain. He needed the money. They had a building separating the, the mail wow. uh, the post office. I don't think that 
that is fair. So now I write one of my steps. I love me. I love me. I love my steps to them. Wow. There's the back side of the post office. It is definitely under construction. There's a bear on it, babe. I've been to the Thresher Union and I've seen enough tractors to last a lifetime. I know, right? I never took you there. I bet they have at least a thousand tractors every 4th of July. Phew! This is amazing. Yes. It it's so much more than I thought that it was going to be. It's big. Very a lot big. bigger than what I was expecting also. I think we've seen all the buildings. If we missed any, it wasn't on purpose. No. <laughs> More information and a boonie for your viewing pleasure. home now we were there over two hours it's almost one o'clock now um, that was completely different than what I was expecting but yeah. it was really really neat I knew there was gonna be um, the fort which is not the original location actually I didn't know that I thought it was the original yeah location. I, I didn't know that either uh, but it's a reconstructed Fort Christmas which is I think we ran into a local who knew a lot about it and he said that the original location of Fort Christmas was nearby but not right there but I did not expect as many um, old houses and yeah exhibits barns and, they and were inside everywhere. fully furnished mm -hmm. um, and some of them had like indoor exhibits or museums I guess dedicated to like cattle farming or hunting or uh, quilting crafts and Way more, way bigger than I was expecting. To music, thoroughly enjoyed it. Live music. Yeah, um, I filmed some bluegrass music. I think I'll put that in here. But there was another band that was playing. Um, they were just kind of taking five. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I I we know. didn't want to stand there and wait. Um, but the craft show was out of this world. This is the biggest craft show we have been to by I, far. By far. In Florida, yeah. We've already bought any and all the Christmas gifts that we're buying for people so we're, we don't need any crafts and we don't really need any crafts for ourselves no. so we didn't really buy anything other than the seasonings that we showed you was it jelly you bought jam? I bought um, a mango jalapeno jelly yeah delicious I didn't try it but Michael did he was going on and on about how good that I know was. it was it was really good so we had a really great time actually I think so yeah probably really definitely want to come back sometime oh my goodness Can you get that big yeah I gotta hang on Look at this big reindeer over here. My gosh, that's the biggest inflatable I've ever seen. I'm not actually sure what that is. Is that someone's yard? That was so much cooler, better, bigger than I expected. So we um, absolutely want to come back on another time when they're hopefully, I think the park is open most days. Mm -hmm. I really haven't done my research on this place, so pardon me if this is misinformation, but I, the way I understood it, the park is open every day of the week or at least every weekend but I don't know if the historical demonstration and reenactment is there right. but they do do piece of war reenactments or those kinds of things periodically at the park so yeah the soldiers were in the back boiling peanuts <laughs> they sure were this was so spontaneous I really don't know what I got what I was getting into but I will look at more into it later and we will definitely come back bring the camera on a day when it's not so crowded I don't mind filming when there's a lot of people but I prefer not to film when there's lots of children 
and yeah. it's just kind of hard to um, not have well, dirty footage really... when you're constantly cutting the children out. So. Yeah, and, and you didn't get the opportunity to pay a whole lot of attention to details because it was kind of crowded in some of those Well, I hope spaces. the footage turns out okay because generally I'm running the camera, but I'm looking myself and I'm not looking at what yeah, I'm filming. Exactly. I'm trying to hold the camera approximately where my eyes are kind of roving around and looking, but I'm not always looking at the screen. So I don't know how this footage has oh, turned I'm out. Oh, I'm sure it's terrific. But anyway, that was Fort Christmas Historical Society's Cracker Christmas. If you're around Orlando, it's definitely worth a visit. Yeah. Um, I would for sure say that. Um, it's called Cracker Christmas. I don't. I know there was some cracking of the whip sounds in some of my footage. However, when we passed by where they were doing that, the demonstrator was actually not Everybody was on lunch break, it seemed like. I kept, I kept hearing the sounds, and I would see him, but he was like way across the park, and I'm like, oh, i got to film that when we get over there, and then we get over there, and he was gone to lunch or to break or whatever, so I didn't actually get to film the guy cracking the whip. I think there was a whip that he was letting volunteers crack. We weren't sure. Yeah, we were going to check it out, yeah. and I was going to do it's it. a really cool sound. I mean, it, the could. sound just ricochets through the park off the tree, and it was really cool sound. All right, we are headed home to pick up our pup and wrap up this video, so this will be the end of it. Welcome to Christmas in yeah. Orange County Community. Christmas, Florida. We're going to have to come back here. I definitely want to. It's worth, yeah, it's worth a visit. It's worth your time. What a cute little part. What a great mm -hmm. way to learn. Anyway, see you guys another day in another Vlogmas. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Bonus footage. Look at this big alligator. Wow. Swampy, the world's largest gator.